Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at the trick-taking game, sort of, of Half Pine Heroes. The concept in this game is not obvious, but it is apparent. It's a trick-taking game that combines that idea with poker. You are going to be playing cards from your hand in order to form the better poker hand and win the trick. As opposed to playing a single card and highest card that got played is the one that wins the trick. And so you will play differing number of cards uh, from play to play. You might play a single card right now when it comes back to you, you might play three cards. And that's the main idea and main innovation found in Half Pine Heroes here. Let me give you a look at how it works, just a brief overview, we'll come on back after that, and I'll tell you if I think it's successful in combining those two things. The game is going to be played over 10 rounds, and at the end of those 10 rounds, whoever has the highest score is going to be the winner. To set up the game, we're going to give each player one of these betting tokens. You get some uh, prediction cards here, these four cards in your own color. We're going to shuffle up the deck of cards and get ready to begin. So, uh, as well as write the names of the players here in our score sheet, just to keep track of that. I'll move that aside for now, since we don't need to look at it at the moment. All right, so here's how the setup for the round goes. We're going to shuffle up the deck of cards. We'll flip over one card, and that card is going to have a suit, a number, just like all the other ones on the deck, but also at the bottom, here it's going to tell you how many cards go face up in the center of the table, and how many cards go to the player's hands. And these are going to be varied uh, throughout the deck of cards. So this is already one. This is telling me four face up cards. So that's one, two, three, four, and then four cards to each player, which I would deal normally, but I'm doing it quickly for now. And then we're ready to begin. Now the players are going to take a look at their hand and they are going to take a look at what's available here, what's face up, and they are going to predict how many tricks they think they can take, meaning how many times can they play and have the winning poker hand at the table. And so for example, I might take a look here at my hand and say, okay, I got a pair of eights here. There is no eights out there. Um, I got a five right here, another five on the table. So that could be a pair. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, no nine, and no four, so I cannot make a straight. I'm gonna predict that I'll be able to take, um, oh, let's say two. And this would be played face down. Everybody would do this, okay? So this player is gonna predict one. I haven't even looked at their hands, I'm just doing it. And this player will predict uh, one as well. And then they all get revealed. And once that's done, then you are going to take this and simultaneously, everyone's gonna take their uh, their plus 20 chip here, which is a very nice poker chip, and, and simultaneously put it in front of someone that you think is not going to make their bet, their prediction. So this player might put it here and this player might put it here as well, because I'm crazy, I said two. And then whoever the star player would be is going to kick it off. And so I have to play at least one card from my hand to form a poker hand, the best I can do, or I don't have to, I don't have to play the best I can, but I, uh, I have to form a poker hand with at least one, and if I want, some of the cards from the center. So for example, I could play the two eights at once, and my play is a pair of eights. That's my play. If I do this instead, then I've got this five and this five, I've got a pair of fives. What I mean by best is I cannot say, I cannot play this and say, oh, I have a five high card, that's my best play. I have to take the best thing that's available once I've played. In this case, again, pair of fives. But let's say I don't wanna do any of that. I wanna, I'm gonna take my two tricks, I'm hoping to maybe do it later. So I'm gonna play a six, it's just high card, just a six. And then this player would go, and they're gonna take a look at their hand, and they're gonna play uh, this 11 here and say, okay, I've got a pair of 11s. And then this player is gonna go, and this player is gonna play, um, ooh, pair of, no, that's too good. Could do that though, yeah, I'll do that. This player's gonna play two fives and two ones at the same time. And they're gonna say, I have a full house, fives, and ones, okay? So they win, they collect all the cards that got played by the players, not the ones in the center, those stay there. They take these, they put them face down somewhere, since they are out, 
It's the next player who is now going to lead, and I'm going to lead just a pair of fives in this case. This player is going to take a look at what they've got. They're going to play a two. They lose to, I mean, you know, they lose to my pair of fives, so I'll take those. That's one trick for me. And then I'm going to play, I have to win one more, so I'll play my two eights and say I got a pair of eights. This player is going to play a 13 and say, nope, I got that one. But they have a car left over, which means they're going to play that, and they're also going to win that because they're by themselves. So that's two tricks they took, okay? Uh, which they were hoping for just one, but they were stopping me from getting two, I guess. So that's what they did. So now we move on to scoring, and the scoring goes as follows. You're going to get 10 points for each set you took, for each trick you won. If you made your bet, the card tells you how many bonus points you've got on top of that, if you made your prediction. And if the chip you played out with the plus 20 is on top, in front of someone that did not, in fact, make their prediction, then you also get that plus 20, all right? So usually that's the best way to do it, is to check that first. This was wrong, so we'll flip that. And these are both wrong, so we'll flip those. Great, we don't have to worry about those, okay? And now we would score. So I would get 10 for this. I did not make that, so I don't get that bonus. 10 points. This player took one, that's 10, but they did do, uh, they made their prediction, which was as, as a single trick. So 10, and this one says they got another 10. 20 for them. And then this player over here gets 10, 20. They did not make this, but they still get the two, the, the 20 from the two tricks they played, all right? Uh, and that's it. Then we would shuffle all this up, deal out a new card face up. So in this case, let's say this is the first card flipped over. It lets us know, okay, two cards only to the table, but six in players' hands. And so it would be those two, but everybody's holding six cards instead, which would make for a very sort of different dynamic when you are playing out sets and tra taking, those, uh, taking those tricks in the game. Uh, again, you continue playing for 10 rounds, and at the end of those 10 rounds, or 10 hands, if you would, then you figure out who the winner is, and that's whoever has the most points, of course. There's a couple of special scoring um, uh, variances in it. That is, if anyone ever takes three tricks back-to-back, -back, so they, they win three times the highest poker hand, then they trigger what's called a brawl. At that point, uh, the hand is over, and only they are going to score some victory points. And then also... If ever someone uh, predicts correctly five times in a row, and in fact on the sheets here, there's a little circle next to where your score would go. If you make your prediction, you cross that out. If you start a brawl, also you write a B in there, no one else scores. But if you do that five times in a row, you make that prediction correctly five times in a row, that's called triggering a gunfight. If, if you can do it again immediately, if you do it the sixth time right after that, the game's completely over and you've simply won the whole thing. You don't have uh, up scores, you don't do any of that. So those are a couple of different things that could that could uh, happen. And then at the very end of the game, you are going to get some more points as well, which is simply right here on the side of the, uh, at the, at the bottom of the score boards here. And that lets you know that at the end, you are going to get uh, 10 points for at the longest run of those crossed out spots or brawls count too. So let's say I was able to do it three times in a row. That's another 30 points at the very end of the game. Add up all that score. Highest is the winner. So hopefully that gives you a, a half-decent idea of how the game works. It's basically poker hands, but the way you score those poker hands is by playing tricks and having the highest poker hand, which is like having the highest, you know, trump card or whatever you want to, however you want to think of it. So let's go back up top. And let me tell you if I think that this amalgamation of those two ideas works well in the game. All right, so there it is. Let's talk about it. I'm going to start with thematic ties. I think the, the game has a really fun theme. It's, it's clever. It's interesting. It's uh, different than most uh, trick-taking games out there. I guess the, the theme is a little more pokery, you know, a little more... There's more bravado in it, right? A bar room brawl kind of theme. Um, but it's clever and I, I thought it was, it was neat and, and new and, you know, there's not that many games that, um, that are about a, a brawl, certainly not trick taking games, you know, so I liked it. The aesthetics, which is artwork components, things like that, I think are, those are my biggest positive in this game. The artwork is fantastic. The poker chips that come in there are incredible. They're nice, chunky, they look beautiful. The whole thing looks spectacular. 
And, and I really am appreciative of that kind of attention to detail. The illustrations, for one thing, are very humorous and well done. So it's, uh, it's kind of from, from that point of view, from sitting there and being able to look at your cards and, and play with the, the poker chips and so on, it's a pleasure. The replayability, which also is scalability. This game scales up very high, uh, though I do worry that that adds to a lot of randomness because it's simply that much harder to predict how many tricks you think you'll be taking. It's just uh, you're really shooting in the dark there. Uh, and, and even discounting that, I think the replayability is just all right. You know, as much as any other trick-taking game. How about that? Hen hindered, in my opinion, by my next point, which is game length. I do think this game is long. I think 10 hands uh, is just too much for a trick-taking game these days. You know, they, that harkens back to this idea of play three hands per player that many trick-taking games still do, but older trick-taking games especially do. Or play to, you know, 300 points or something. We can now make a game that is shorter and more palatable than that. And if the players choose to play again, then let them play again. But there's no reason this game needs to be 10 rounds. That's quite a few. And I'm sort of ready to be done after uh, six, let's say. But you still got to sit there for four more full hands. Not that each hand is that long, but it does feel like the whole thing is a bit drawn out. I understand that the, uh, the scoring for the game length needs to be that way, but they could have adjusted the scoring and made the game a little shorter. And then you might be inspired to play again, like I said. Um, the ease of play, which is if there's any fiddliness, any iconography or design choices that are a little bit weird... I thought the ease of play was pretty high. I like the um, the cheat sheets that they give you are are, are good. They, they make sense. They're clear. I like that. Some of the iconography on the scoring pad, at the bottom of the scoring pad, and on the opposite side of the ranking, poker ranking, uh, are a little obtuse. But again, this is all just as a reference to something that's already mentioned in the rule book anyway. And, and, and once you internalize the game... You can quickly glance at that and go, oh, right, this is where we do that. That's that's what that little symbol means, right. But they're not necessarily obvious symbols, okay? So this is fine. I, I don't dislike the ease of play. I thought it was well implemented, and uh, the game flows pretty well, you know. Uh, and then lastly, tactics and strategy and luck and randomness. I Unfortunately, this is a, something that I thought was... Uh, not that great because I find this idea of controlling I'm, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of the trick-taking games of the kind of trick-taking games in which you predict How many tricks you're going to take? It's just not necessarily my favorite trick-taking mechanism Okay, you look at a hand of cards and you go off. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll think I think I'll win four uh, you, you know, you don't know what anyone's hand uh, anyone else's hand is you are Hoping to be close, and I like games that score for being close. This one does. But in this one, since you don't know at the rate that people's hands are going to run out, because you're not playing a single card, it's even harder to predict that. You might end up getting more tricks than you thought, um, which is good, I guess, because you're getting the points for the tricks, but you'll miss your bet. And you might, you know, someone might play a bunch of cards all at once, or they might trickle them out one at a time. It's just harder to control the length of each hand. And I thought that was, um, that compounds the problem of predicting how many tricks you think you'll be taking, you know. I also don't necessarily like when the hand, uh, you know, as you're flipping over a card, it tells you how many cards you display face up and how many you're holding. I like the few cards on the table, lots of cards in my hand. When one of those comes up, I don't like the opposite nearly as much when there are you know, five cards face up, but I'm holding two, I think it is, two or three. And that just doesn't feel like a lot of, um, I understand that it might be easier to predict, right? Because you're holding one or two cards or two or two or three cards, but it's just not as satisfying a round for me when that happens. I want to be able to play cards. It's, it's a card playing game. So there is that as well. So all of that to say that I think the game is clever. It's interesting. It's uh, in many ways a, an, an original design. It combines two things that I wouldn't have thought to combine, you know. But it also feels kind of lucky and a little bit swingy. It feels in its scoring um, mechanisms 
like an old school design, you know. And I'm not sure who it's going to appeal to. I love the humor in the theme and the artwork. I like that. I feel like trick-taking connoisseurs, though, might find it too swingy and too silly, perhaps. Too difficult to control. I feel like maybe those that enjoy poker aren't going to find the trick-taking mechanisms appealing enough to pull them away from poker or something more poker-like. I'm not sure. It's a weird monster, this one. It's a, it's a neat monster, but it is a weird one. I enjoy it, but I'm not necessarily enamored with it. I'll tell you, the theme and the look of the whole thing does wonders to keep me interested, but I, if you stripped that away, I'm not necessarily sure how often I would come back to this one. So, yes, I like it. I'm not saying run out there and get it, but if the overview looks good, if you, if you think you're going to appreciate the humor and the illustrations and the concept, if you are not a big stickler for trick-taking games where you can mitigate everything, then yes, I think you're going to enjoy it. Otherwise, perhaps if you want to try trick-taking games or you already know many of them, find something slightly more traditional with a little more control and I think you might be ultimately happier. Not condemning this one, but I'm not necessarily saying it's a blind buy either, all right? So hopefully that's useful to you. Uh, that is Half Pine Heroes. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.